Now in this video we're going to first factor a difference of squares or factor by pulling out a greatest common factor. So we'll do these examples 1 through 7. The first 4 is pulling out a greatest common factor and then uh, 5, 6 and 7 is factoring a difference of squares method. So let's start with example 1. So we have x squared plus x equals 0. Now um, just quickly you know if you try to solve that, we you know how to solve a linear equation, you know, you, x squared plus x equals zero. Let's try and subtract x from both sides and see what happens. x squared equals negative x. I mean, we cannot isolate x with linear methods by adding and subtracting to both sides, for example. So we're stuck. Um, again, well, the first thing we need to do is factorize usually the left-hand side and have one side equal to zero. So we can use the zero product rule. So if I factorize the left-hand side, x squared plus x, what type do I need? And again, you should you know use your factoring sheet to figure it out. And you'll see if you have an x squared term and an x term, you always pull out a common factor. The greatest common factor is x, isn't it? So if we pull an x out, x times x gives x squared, x times positive 1 gives x, doesn't it? So I have x times x plus 1 equals 0. Now what? Well, use the zero product rule. And you can put parentheses around this if you like. There's nothing stopping you doing that. So I have x times x plus 1 equals 0. So if this times this is 0, then either the x is 0 or the x plus 1 factor is 0. And solve both of them. Well, x is 0. That's the answer to that, isn't it? Uh, subtract 1 from both sides here and I have x is negative 1. So I have x is 0 or negative 1. My solution set is 0 comma negative 1 with the curly braces, right? And that's it. And if you check it, you'll see that it works. If I plug 0 into x, I, th this whole thing becomes 0. If I plug negative 1 in, this becomes positive 1. This becomes negative 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. So press pause in the video and solve this one. 6x squared minus 3x equals 0. And again, the trick is, whenever we have an equation with an x squared in it, we should try and have 0 on one side and factor the left-hand side. If I factor this, the only way to do it is by pulling out a greatest common factor. Now, 3 goes into both terms. Does x go into both terms? Yep. So pull out 3x. 3x times what gives the top? 3 times 2 gives 6. x times x gives x squared. And 3 ta 3x times what gives negative 3x? Negative 1, right? And that's equal to 0. So I have 3x times 2x minus 1 equals 0. And how do I solve that? Well, you can use the zero product rule. There's nothing stopping you putting parentheses around that. It says the same thing. So this times this equals 0. Either the 3x equals 0 or the 2x minus 1 equals 0. So solve each equation. If I solve this, divide by 3 on both sides, I have x is 0. Solve this one, add 1 to both sides, 2x equals 1. Divide by 2, x equals positive a half. So x is 0 or positive a half. The solution set would be 0, comma, 1 half. And you can plug 0 in for x, and you'll see that the answer holds true. And plug a half in for x, you'll find the answer also holds true. Okay. Um, and just to show you one common mistake that you might do, um, here, this is an interesting thing. If you went 6x squared minus 3x equals 0, okay, what happens if I add 3x to both sides, for example, and get 6x squared equals 3x, and then divide both sides by x? Or, in fact, you could divide both sides by 3x, and this would give you 6 over 3 is 2x equals 1. And now divide by 2, and I have x equals 1 half. Interesting. And one of the answers is 1 half, isn't it? But I didn't find the 0 answer. Now, 0 is definitely an answer because you see 6 times 0 squared minus 3 times 0 
is definitely going to give me 0. This would be 0 minus 0, which is 0. So x equals 0 is one valid answer. And 0 is a number on the number line. Okay, it's a real number. And it is an answer. And we, if we did this method, we lost it. So we can't do this method. And if you notice, at this point, we divided by x. And x is, in fact, 0. And you might remember from a previous course that you, you're, or you're not allowed to divide by 0. Dividing by 0 is nonsense. And so this step was technically incorrect because x could be 0 here. See? So in any case, don't do it this way. Factorize it for now. That will do. And so if I'm solving these equations, where x squared equals negative 8x, what I should not do is try and divide by, say, 4x on both sides, you know, and get x equals, say, negative, that would be negative 2, and so on. That's one of the solutions, but there, I'm, the another solution to this is x is 0, and I've missed it by doing, the, by doing it this way. Because I'm dividing by 4x, and x, one of the answers for x is actually 0, and you're not allowed to divide by 0. So in any case, I just want to point that out, that this method will lose one of the answers and don't do it, okay? So for all of these, we have the same steps. First, we get 0 on one side, then we factorize, and then we use the zero product rule. So, you know, if you want to write those down, you can. So to solve quadratic equations um, by factoring, the first step we always do is get 0 on, let's say, the right-hand side, the right side. The second step is to factor the left-hand side, whichever method. You know, you've got your short, um, long, um, pull, out, greatest common factor, or your difference of squares method. So one of these methods... And the third step would be the zero product rule. If a times b equals zero, then a equals zero or b equals zero. Okay? So solving quadratic equations by factoring that they those are our three steps. So the first step is get zero on one side. And let's look at that here. If I want to get zero on the right, how would I get zero on the right hand side here? Add eight x. Wouldn't that work? And now the left hand side says four x squared plus eight x is equal to zero. Now factorize the left hand side. We have an x squared term and an x term. Whenever we have that, the method is pull out the greatest common factor. Now the greatest common factor in this case would be. Well, 4 goes into both terms, x goes into both terms, pull out 4x, 4x times what gives 4x squared, 4x times x would give 4x squared, right? 4 times what gives 8? Positive 2, and 4x times 2 would be 8x, right? So that's the answer, and we have 0 on the right, so we have done the first two steps. The first step was, you know, this is the first step, get 0 on the right-hand side. Second step was to um, factor the left-hand side. And now the third step is the zero product rule. If A times B is 0, then A is 0 or B is 0, right? So we write either 4x is 0 or the x plus 2 is 0 and solve each equation. So I'll press pause and do it. So, you know, divide by 4 on both sides, x is 0. Subtract 2 from both sides, x is negative 2. So x is 0 or negative 2. The solution set is 0, comma, negative 2. And solve this equation, 5x squared equals 5x. So press pause on the video and do it. Now I'll do it. First step is to get 0 on the right-hand side and have 5x squared minus 5x is equal to 0. Second step is to factorize the left-hand side. I have an x squared term and an x term, so the method is pull out a greatest common factor. 
And the greatest common factor is 5x. 5x times what gives 5x squared, 5x times x. 5x times what gives negative 5x, 5x times negative 1. And that's equal to 0. So we have this times this is 0. The, the, the third, the, the, so this is the first step, second step, and then the third step is the zero product rule. So either your 5x is zero or your x minus one is zero, right? So divide by five, x is zero, add one, x is one. So x is zero or x is one. The solution set is zero comma one with the curly braces, right? Now, example 5. x squared minus 169 equals 0. When we're solving quadratic equations, quadratic equation is whenever you have an x squared, the highest power of x is squared, and there's an equal somewhere, that means it's a quadratic equation. So when we solve a quadratic equation, we have three steps. First, get 0 on the right-hand side. Oh, it's already done. First step is done, right? No problem, don't have to worry about that. Second step is to factorize the left-hand side with one of the four methods, short, long, polar race, common factor, or difference of squares. So what method do we need to, to factorize this side? It looks like a difference of squares, isn't it? Now, if you know your times tables properly, that is actually x squared minus 13 squared. 13 squared is 169, okay? Uh, difference of squares, you'll remember a squared minus b squared is equal to a plus b times a minus b, right? And we've done this a lot, so we should know this by now. So this factors to be x plus 13 times x minus 13 is equal to 0. So that is the second step completed. The third step is if the zero product rule. If a times b is zero, a is zero, or b is zero. So we have this times this is zero. So either the x plus 13 equals zero, or the x minus 13 equals zero. And if I solve each one, subtract 13 from both sides, and then add 13 to both sides here, so this becomes x is negative 13, or x is positive 13, right? Two solutions, negative 13 or positive 13. And if you check them, they both work. If 13 squared, say negative 13 squared would give 169. 169 minus that would be zero. Positive 13 squared would be 169, and that minus 169 would give zero. So the solution set would look like this, negative 13, comma, positive 13. It may also look like this plus or minus 13, where this is positive or negative 13. So this uh, notation here represents two numbers, positive 13 and negative 13 at the same time. So this is this thing here is means, you know, plus or minus, plus or minus. Example 6, 5x squared minus 20 equals 0. Again, the trick is, you know, get 0 on the right-hand side, factor the left-hand side, 0 product rule. We already have 0 on one side, that's fine. We need to factor the left-hand side. Now, we actually did cover how to factor these. If you can ever pull out a greatest common factor, do it. Whenever you're factorizing an expression, you can pull out a greatest common factor, do it. So we can. And in fact, the greatest common factor is what? What goes into this term and this term? Is it 5? Right. So pull 5 out. What are we left with? 5 times x squared gives 5x squared. 5 times negative 4 gives negative 20. And that's equal to 0. So 5 times this equals 0. And, you know, just keep factorizing. Can you factorize x squared minus 4? Looks like a difference of squares, doesn't it? Looks like x plus 2 times x minus 2 equals 0. And we still have 5 here. Now, one little thing we need to note about the zero product rule is this. Um, 
the zero product, I mean, if, if you have 5 times A times B equals zero, surely, you know, if A was zero, the whole thing would be zero, right? It doesn't matter about the 5. And if B was zero, the whole thing would be zero. So it doesn't matter about the 5, right? So it doesn't really matter if you have something multiplied by the two variables. So this 5 can basically be ignored because this whole thing is going to be zero if the x plus 2 is zero or if your x minus 2 is zero, isn't it? So solve this and we have x is negative 2. Solve this one, we have x is positive 2. And you know, notice that because if, if, if you put negative 2 in here, for x, negative 2 plus 2 gives what? Gives 0, doesn't it? So this whole thing would be 0, and that would make the whole this whole side be 0. If you plug positive 2 in for x here, what's 2 minus 2? That's also 0, isn't it? So this whole thing would be 0. So you can basically ignore this 5. The answer is negative 2 or positive 2. And if you, you can even check it in here. See, negative 2 all squared is 4. 5 fours is 20. 20 minus 20. And then positive 2 squared. So negative 2 or positive 2. Positive 2 squared is 4. 5 fours is 20. 20 minus 20 is 0. Okay. Now press pause on the video and figure out this one. Okay, now I'll do it. You can pull a 2 out from both terms. 2 times x squared minus 1 is equal to 0, right? And if you can now factorize the x squared minus 1. Leave the 2 there. Don't have to worry about it. x squared minus 1 is the same as x squared minus 1 squared, isn't it? So it's a difference of squared numbers, and it can be written x plus 1 times x minus 1. And your 2 stays there. And that's equal to 0. So 2 times this times this is 0. So either the x plus 1 is 0 or the x minus 1 is 0. Right? And if I solve this equation, I have x is negative 1. If I solve this, I have x is positive 1. And we can just ignore this 2. It's not going to change anything. And so the solution set would be, you know, negative 1 or positive 1 or in other words plus or minus one and the solution set for here for this um, example could have been written plus or minus two right